Hello friends, uh, welcome to Course Tellers Tech Sessions. My name is Gaurav Madan and I'm also called as Course Teller and my email ID is gauravmadan at theratoutlook.com and today I'm going to teach you about how you can use Docker Compose to run multiple containers uh, using the Visual Studio and .NET Core which means we will be creating to .NET based applications and we will run them as containers and then we will be making use of Docker Compose to run them both together. So what do we need and uh, for this and what we will learn? We'll talk about this ahead. Uh, all right. So let's take a look. So we'll learn how to use Visual Studio to orchestrate uh, containers, like how Docker Compose can be used with Visual Studio, even if you are a .NET developer and want to leverage container or orchestration, how Visual Studio empowers you for the same. Uh, we'll talk about what other uh, container orchestration supports are there in the Visual Studio. We'll talk about uh, running a .NET Core based application, um, like multiple applications as containers. And we'll then check out uh, the images in the Docker desktop and command line. For this, we need uh, Visual Studio 2019 and Docker desktop. And for this demo, I'm going to use uh, these resources. So I have uh, learned this uh, from this tutorial, the very first link that I'm showcasing here. And I am using uh, desktop, Docker desktop for Windows and Visual Studio. So let's move on to the demo. So I'm opening my Visual Studio. So I'm going to create a new project first of all. So let's create an ASP.NET Core uh, web application. So I'm going to go here, uh, C Sharp .NET based application. Let's create ASP.NET Core web application rather. And let me place it somewhere in my D directory. In 2020. Yep. And I'm going to name it as, let's say, uh, multi containers app. Okay. And uh, for this one, let's call it uh, multi containers application. And let's call it multi containers application dot web, which means the front end application. And will our solution will be multi containers application. Okay. And uh, let's go and create one. I'm going to create a web application with the HTTPS support because this application is going to interact with the clients. So I'm hitting create. There we go. Next, I am going to create an API application. Let's create a new project. And this time again, an ASP.NET Core application. So I'm calling it as a multi containers API, let's say. Okay, I'm going to say create. And let's call it an API. I am deliberately moving, removing HTTPS uh, because uh, this API will be interacting with the client application only. Uh, otherwise, the best practice is, is, of course, you should use HTTPS. So I'm going to go and create. There we go. We have now an API application and a web application. In the API application, we are having a weather forecast model and in the controller, by default, we are having a weather forecast controller. Yeah, here, there we go. Weather forecast model and controller is there. And when we we'll hit a uh, weather forecast, it will give us the results. Next, uh, let us add containerization support. So very first thing is let's add containerization support. So Visual Studio 2019 has come up with a very nice feature. 
you right click on the project go to add and look for container orchestrator support right so if you click here you can see that microsoft visual studio by default comes up with three types of uh, container orchestrator support one of which is kubernetes then a service fabric and docker compose for this tutorial i am going to use uh, docker compose so let's add the support for docker compose so it is asking me what should be the target OS. I'm going to choose uh, Linux because I want to run my containers, uh, Linux based containers. I'll say OK. So we can see that it has created a couple of files and it has created a Docker Compose project, a Docker Compose YAML, a Docker Ignore and a Docker file. Let's take a look real quick. And there we go. If we go uh, now, uh, very first thing we should look into is Docker Compose. So you can see here it has automatically created a, a service here and it is uh, directing that this Docker file is available here in the multi-container application.web slash Docker file. Okay. So uh, there we have a Docker file. Okay. Now, uh, you can see this this uh, is a docker file which is going to create an image uh, of this application and uh, it is already using the multi stage uh, you know image right so the image size would be optimized by default then uh, let's add the support for in a container orchestrator in the api so I'm going to add a container orchestrator support for the API application. I'm going to choose Docker Compose. There we go. Cool. So it is making changes uh, and you can see that it has already started creating the containers as well, which means if I go and open my uh, Docker desktop, it should be showing me the containers as there as well. So it says Docker containers are ready. Now let us see our Docker compose file that has been updated. So if I go here, you can see here, this has been updated that it will fetch the second application uh, from the multi containers API application. And it has added a Docker file in this project as well. Right. Uh, now let us create a, a simple endpoint, which uh, basically will fetch the data from the multi containers API application. So for this, I'm going to index uh, cshtml.cs on simple on get. Uh, let's create a simple request where request is equal to new HTTP request, let's say. And there we go. And let's call as a request dot URI and I would say so let us add a request URL here I'm going to go and create a request URL give me a moment Let's create HTTP request message rather. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So request URI. Let's keep it as so you can see that it, it is going to accept a URS URL. So I'm going to give it a URL saying HTTP my multi containers application API application. slash weather forecast okay so let's call it a new URI okay next we'll simply do uh, let's see request let's use the HTTP client here
so it in general i would uh, say you should not dispose http client uh, because if you keep on uh, you know uh, disposing that that is going to create problems for you rather you should use uh, HTTP client factory as the best practice so I am uh, making use of a simple client application so I'm going to say client dot send a sync and request I am going to say await so we'll do a read as so we can simply await for this And once we have the response message, okay, so it needs to be async. So I'm going to make it async task. Uh, as soon as I'm having the response, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a view message, or we can use view data. Let's have, uh, you know, a string saying okay and oh let's take the response dot content dot read as a string a sync and let's make it take it away as well okay so now this is expected to uh, show me the response uh, however we have not showcased it on the uh, on the index.cshtml, let's do that so that it showcases me the results as well. So let's simply copy it and paste it here and add it here in this in the paragraph, and it should give me the result here, right? So now, if I go and run my application, let's see what it shows. So you can notice here, it is now running using the Docker Compose uh, right from the Visual Studio. And if I see the output here, it is running the containers and I can see these containers in the Docker desktop as well. So you can see here the responses here, which means this web application is making a call to the API application and is running as a containers. So let us take a look at the Docker desktop. Uh, so you can see here in the Docker desktop, I am having two applications that are running, uh, multi containers API and multi containers web. And as soon as I stop this application, it will go away. So I have stopped the application, and I'm expecting to uh, this to get deleted in a couple of moments. And once I have deleted, all right. So if it does not, I will stop this and we'll delete this. So I'm going to stop these containers. Yep. It is stopping behind the scenes. And now I'm going to close my Visual Studio. All right. And I'm going to delete these containers so you can see now i'm not having any containers running now let us run this using the docker comp compose command so i will go into my uh, file explorer and i'll open that project uh, which i created in the 2020 and we created this app which is multi containers application and this time i will open in the command line so now I'll make use of docker compose command. So if I go here, docker compose up hyphen D so that this keeps on running on the background. And if I hit yes, so it is building the application. You can see it is pulling the image and it will build the container images and it will uh, deploy these containers. All right, so there we go, it is doing its job we should have the images ready in a few moment there we go so it is saying done we can use a uh, docker ps to see the active images so if i go and say docker ps and if i hit yes so i can see i'm having uh, the api application running here oh uh, there's some looks like there is some issue with the uh 
with my web application we need to look into that uh, however I'm having just another application if I go there let us uh, take I just created another one uh, exactly the same so I'm going in my dark net and I created just another example right here and let us check it out do we have a problem in here or not so I'm going to say docker compose and I'm saying going to say up hyphen D and there we go I'm having both the applications it should be up and running so if I go and say docker ps so I'm having three applications which means it is running absolutely fine and you can see here for my web application it is already running on the port 32820 and if I now go to uh, let's go to the browser and check it out so I go to the browser and I open this right here HTTPS localhost and uh, let's check out the port it is 32820 so I'm going to say okay 32820 and uh, looks like we are having a protocol oh okay so you can see here the HTTPS port is 32819 so I'm going to say okay 32819 populate that and it is displaying my reserves perfectly fine and both the containers are running perfectly fine and if I go here uh, I can see that I am having the containers application running perfectly fine here uh, I, I definitely need to check this one why it got exited I can try running it here see if it is exiting uh, we can see the logs here what is happening so it says invalid operation exception unable to configure the HTTPS endpoint okay so uh, this can be handled for sure I'll make changes to the code corresponding to this all right uh, so this was about running your containers and using your docker I, we have seen here we can run multiple containers we can uh, make use of docker compose right from the visual studio uh, to run uh, our containers as well as we can make use of docker compose and we can analyze uh, everything right from our uh, our docker desktop on how much memory consumption it is doing and how much cpu usage it is doing and this was about uh, running your applications dotnet core based applications using docker compose thank you very much uh, that's it keep watching